Hello and welcome to The Exchange, a program where we exchange ideas and opinions on matters that affect our everyday lives. I'm Rob Buckingham and my co-host on The Exchange is my wife, Christy. And I am really happy to be here and yep. looking forward to getting into today's topic. It's going to be a great show today. In fact, on today's show, we're discussing how to be financially prepared for retirement. We'll take a look at things like at what age should you start planning for retirement and how much do you need to really retire comfortably. To discuss this topic, we're happy to be joined by Dominic Alafaci, who's the Managing Director of Collins House Private Wealth. Welcome to you, Dominic. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you on the show. We're also thrilled to be joined by Vicky Massey, who is the Distribution Manager at Allstock Life, a company that specialises in insurance bonds. Hi, Vicky. Great to have you. Thanks, Christy. Lovely to be here. Now, before we get into the discussion today, we're going to take a look at this video. What's your plan for the future? Are you going to retire to a life of leisure? Perhaps learn a sport. Maybe you'll just go and watch a lot of sporting events. What about finally learning to play the guitar? They're all good plans, but how are you going to get there? If you haven't set yourself up financially by retirement age, you could find yourself working a lot longer than expected. What plans do you need to put into place to retire comfortably? Well, let's start with you, Dominic. Uh, I just no noticed here as well, you are the author of Grow, Manage and Protect Your Wealth. And it says the, um, the subtitle is 17 Tips You Can't Afford to Ignore. So I don't know if we get all 17 <laughs> tips uh, into today's program, but let's start with number one here. How important is it to be prepared financially for retirement? Look, I think it's so important that, um, like many things in our lives, we forget to do it. We forget to do the important things, whether it's exercise, health, you know, eating properly. It's one of those very important things, as important as, as exercising and eating properly. And a lot of people forget about how quickly time flies and we think, you know, when was the last grand final your team won? Could have been 15 years ago. Oh, longer if you're a St Kilda fan, oh, right? Or Melbourne. <laughs> oh, yes. I won't rub it in. Uh, being a Collingwood supporter, sorry guys. Moving right along. <laughs> yes, uh, but on a serious note, time flies and it's very important to sit down at a time that suits you and map out a few things that you're going to do and put some dates towards those things you're going to do. Without a date, it's just an idea. Okay, very good. Vicky, what would you add to that? Um, yeah, I think the other, the other point is to try and start now. And the things that you're planning for are not just retirement, it's actually all life events. So we're looking at not your, perhaps um, um, buying your first home, educating children, and retirement is one of those things that you're planning for. So th the time to start really is, is as soon as possible. It's an interesting point, isn't it? Because yeah. we were talking about this the other day, actually, and how um, it's often, OK, I've got to educate the kids first and I need to do this, and that and the, the other, by the house. So how do you actually, how do you recommend that someone actually plans for retirement during those years of high expenses? Look, it's really difficult. I spend most of my life advising people what to do. And, and um, in a nutshell, unless you, you have really large disposable income, you're not going to be able to afford to educate your children by saving. Yes. Unless you've got disposable income that you can set aside in the years where you don't have children and build up a little nest egg. Um, Vicky's company has got a terrific product for grandparents, and I use it quite a lot, whereby they may, if they've got sufficient funds, set aside money for a life event like a child's education plan. Wow. And that's why that's that's one of the, the uses of, of the Ausdoc product. Um, but those people who don't have wealthy grandparents, the children that is, the grandchildren, um, it's very difficult and most parents find that they have to pay for the education out of their recurrent income. And so paying for your child's education is not actually a retirement plan? Well, <laughs> so you're not actually hoping that they... <laughs> well, you're not hoping that they get a job that then can actually be your superannuation? Well, no, that would be so nice. Well, you're probably hoping that they become well-educated so that they can get a good job to look after you. Yes. So it is a little bit of an insurance bit. policy. A little bit of an insurance yeah. policy. How much money do you need to actually retire comfortably? Well, we were talking about that the other day and... Um, you know, Centrelink, the age pension, is becoming more and more restrictive and, uh, you know, you can't really live on the age pension. Most people can't. 
The previous generation, if you were born in the 30s or 40s, you perhaps could have. But people who were born in the 50s and 60s that are looking at retirement now, finding it really difficult because their their expectations are great, are much greater than yes. their parents. Lifestyle expectations. Absolutely. Yeah. But look, mm -hmm. if you have around $500,000 in a nest egg mm -hmm. and you draw about $3,000 a month, you're pretty sure that you'll, you'll, that lump sum will last about 18 years. That's a pretty reasonable time when you've stopped working. If you stop working at, say, 65, that'll put you into a reasonable position. In addition to that, you'll pick up some Centrelink benefits, provided you don't have lots of other assets. Right. Mm. And, and so, I mean, it keeps you going into your early 80s. So yep. you just, what if you live to 100, you know? Yeah, that, that is obviously an issue. Yeah, and what if, you, what if you actually are, I mean, our health is getting better and better. So if you're 65, do you want to stop travelling? Do you want to stop, do you want to start living in a very confined I tell my budget? clients to spend it and enjoy their lives to the max when they're between, say, 65 and 80. The first thing we must do is make sure we own our own home. Before so is we... that more important than preparing for yep. retirement? Yep. Okay. Because if you've got a safe place to live and you own it and you don't have to um, worry about where you're going to live, you'll live longer, firstly. Right. Psychologically, there's less stress. And you usually surround yourself with people and facilities that you are familiar with and you like and you trust. That's very important also. So when you get to 85 or something like that... Just move in with your kids. Well, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you could downsize your house or take out a reverse mortgage, yep. um, which is an, an, an inverse of what we're used to. They give you a, a drip feed and when you a, a cash um, or a lump sum. And when you pass away, the house is sold and the loan's repaid. You don't have to pay any interest. Do they put the any pressure on the sale of the house at that point? Like, does no. that become a problem for your executors? No, it's, look, there are a couple of good providers um, and then there are some <laughs> lousy providers. But if it's done properly and you're in a position where, you know, you're healthy and you're 80, in your 80s and you don't have any more money and the age pension isn't enough to live on, a modest reverse mortgage makes a lot of sense. Okay. Right. Vicky, what uh, advice would you give on this? I think the other the other important point is these days people at 65 aren't thinking they're going to retire. I think they want to be a little bit more active yes, it's and true. are quite happy to work a lot longer and that's probably where, where we're heading yep. because the age pension age too will start to shift out and that means that you do have to look at thinking, well, I'm not going to retire in my at 55 or 65 these yep. days. You're going to work a little bit longer. Yep. And I think that's that's a realistic that, that's goal. That's a very interesting thought, though, in a society that we don't generally uh, advocate for, for older people. And so, therefore, if a person loses a job in their 50s or 60s, and yep. you're saying now that people are pushing out retirement later, it's harder for them to get another job or yeah, to even true. keep a job when you've got a 30, yeah, 40 true. year old coming up that's true. who wants the position. Absolutely. I suppose the, the counterpoint to that is that people are still looking for that experience and you know you do have a lot of life experience in your 60s. People Absolutely. are younger in their 60s too, then it is different, it's changing and yes. I do think there's a lot more value placed on that experience going forward. Yeah, yes. very true. Now Christy, you've got a, a I do. question I have that's a, come through on Facebook. I have a Facebook question which says, asks the question basically, if it's difficult to get people to prepare for retirement in their 40s and 50s, how on earth do you start a 20 to 30 year old? Because the, the <laughs> ideal would be that you start early. Oh, absolutely, that's the ideal. That is that is a really good question. How do you get people? Because most twenty-year-olds are just thinking about what what dress they're going to wear <laughs> to, the, to a party next week, yes. or if they're going to go. Or what trousers they're going to wear. Yes, I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. <laughs> Although there's um, nothing wrong with wearing it. No, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> yeah, but you're right. But there are some exceptions to the rule. I think we were talking in the break that there's some, you know, some twenty and thirty-year-olds who are very focused and very very much looking at, at their financial future and securing properties properties and you know really excited about it but generally. But is there a product like the first homeowner's product where they put money away for four years if you don't use it for a new home then that has to go to your super. Is there a product for 20 year olds that that we can lock something away until retirement? Honestly I would say um, a good swift kick up the pants might be better. <laughs> right, because that's a great okay. product. I, I look, so we could just know, help people with that maybe. Yeah, yeah. Guidance perhaps no, no violence perhaps some yes. guidance. Um, would be appropriate and 
um, explaining to the younger generation that if only I had have done that when I was your age, look what I would have now. Yes. I think that's a very valuable lesson that we can perhaps mm. get them to learn. Yeah. Absolutely. There are financial products that are savings plans, so you don't have to have a lump sum to go into an investment. So some people think, oh, I can't invest because I have to have 50 or 60, you know, 50 or 100,000 to go into something. You don't need to have that. You can start with $2,000 and contribute to it. So that yep. is that does suit does. a younger person that perhaps could do that and think, well, I'm, at least I'm doing something. As long as they're disciplined, maybe not to keep dipping into that. Yeah, you well, know. that's Absolutely. why we're looking at a product that you yeah. can yeah. touch. Yeah, very yeah, well, good. Yeah. All right, some great discussion. Yeah. We will come back with more in just a moment on The Exchange. Welcome back to The Exchange. We're having a great discussion here with Dominic Alafachi and Vicky Massey on how to make sure you can retire comfortably. Vicky, what are some of the realistic short-term goals that you can set for this? Yeah, well, as we were talking about in the break, um, your short-term goals are actually going to depend on where you are in your life cycle. So if you're in your 20s, it may be going overseas and buying a car. If you're in your 30s, hope maybe getting married, hopefully, cross your fingers, um, or these days it's stretching out. If you're in your 40s, it's often that you're trying to educate children. And then the other goal, probably by the time you're in your 50s, 60s, is to, to be debt free and have your own home. And that was the other things we were talking about before, having your own home, Dominic. Mm, I agree. And the other thing I'd say is if you're going to be having a short term goal of buying a home, which is very commonplace, Try not to have the best home in the street. Perhaps be a little bit more modest and pay that off and have less debt because less debt means that you're in the market, you've got your foothold on a block of land with a house on it, which is the primary purpose of having uh, a home, obviously, and it allows you then to start saving for those other life events. That's yes. Right. Yep. Let's talk superannuation. Um, what are some of the biggest misconceptions with superannuation? Well, superannuation is often thought as an investment, but it's nothing other than a tax vehicle. It's a bucket in which investments are put in and it's taxed less than it would be taxed otherwise. So um, my superannuation went up, my superannuation went down. No, it didn't. The assets in your superannuation fund, the shares or the property, they fluctuated in value. So it's, think of it as a receptacle, you put investments in. Okay. Now we have to, obviously there is compulsory super that paid yes. by your employer. Would you recommend people to also top up their superannuation or invest separately to that? Um, yeah, there's a pecking order and depending on how much money that you have left over after you've paid... And whether you've paid your house off. Yes. So yep. pay your house off first, yep. put as much money as you can into superannuation under the limits and then use the next best tax paid product which are insurance bonds. So home, non-deductible debt first, yep. superannuation second tax paid bonds there. Great. Okay. Vicky, yep. you'd agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the key things when we're talking about things like superannuation and all of those products is trying to get some good advice on those because that's one of the key mistakes that people do make, that they don't actually look at what their goals are and have some financial guidance. And one of those misconceptions with super, as Dom said, is that it's a, it's a tax vehicle. You actually need to get some advice on how to then invest the money for your, your risk profile and what you're comfortable with. And what, where you're at. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, well, some great comments. Let's go out onto the street now and see what the people have to say. Can you tell me, what do you plan to do for retirement? Well, to be honest, um, buy a Harley Davidson let the hair out into the wind and just cruise. Well, we look at investing in property over the next 20 to 30 years and trying to use that as a bit of a nest egg, really. Well, hopefully uh, the super keeps building up. Uh, yeah, no, I started work when I was pretty young, so I've already got a little bit of super there and hopefully that, yeah, keeps building up. Oh, I'm probably just going to be a tattooed old lady sitting on my porch telling people to get off my lawn. Uh, not at this stage, but I have had a few thoughts about what to do. What are your plans for retirement? I'd like to say I have some, but I actually have none, which is a bit frightening. Can you tell me how much do you think you'll need financially for retirement? I think to be safe, 50 will do, $50,000. No, no, just for the bike. But for the whole thing, uh, look, I can tell you what I'd like, and it'll be with, a, with quite a few zeros. 30000 a year, so I couldn't do the maths, but yeah, how about that? I guess we'll probably need 800000 maybe, maybe do a million, that's probably a nice settlement. Oh, a ridiculous amount. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous amount. Do you have any idea how much you might need for retirement? Nah, not really. Enough for a caravan, I guess. 
No, I haven't really thought about that yet, just in the middle of having kids at school and, and spending all our money on that at the moment. And when do you think you might start? Um, I guess I should start now, but I think it's not something that you really think of while you're young. Um, probably when I'm 40, 50 plus. Oh, some interesting comments and opinions from the people out on the street. Our Street Talk reporter is Sandra Cavallo. Welcome. Hello, how are you? Really well. Uh, how did you feel, how realistic did you feel they were, Sandra, from your opinion? Oh, totally. Um, I was actually um, not surprised at all by the responses. Um, I think majority of the people were like, yeah, no, not planning for it, um, mm. not really thinking about it, uh, either because they're raising a family and so they're locked into that or, or they're young. Or they just want to buy a Harley and... <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Right. <laughs> what did you think, Dominic, about the um, amount that that guy said, 30000 It didn't sound like a lot of money. Where would that sit in to I retire on? I think 30000 a year, I think, is what he meant. Right. Um, and for a comfortable oh. retirement for a single person, he's not too far out. 36000 or about 3000 a month is reasonable for a modest retirement, I should say. If so. you own your own home already. You own your own home? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. You're getting 3000 a month, you can live reasonably comfortably. And of course it would be better if you were husband and wife because then you combine the, the yep. retirement income. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Sandra, what struck you from what you uh, heard from the people out on the street? I think the key thing is the young people actually because it's not something that young people think about and, and if they're not planning for it now, when will they? Um, so I think that's really just like, wow, you know, I need to even take stock of myself, you know, am yep. I, am I starting to plan for my future. I think that's the, the key thing that really struck me. There was a lady that was interviewed and I imagine, I mean, she looked like she was in her 50s. I hope I haven't got that horribly wrong, especially if she's watching right now. <laughs> oh, <she laughs> my my humble it's apologies. All good. It's all good. But uh, she said she wasn't even thinking about it yeah. at no. the moment. Is that a common thing? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think, I think she was also saying she was caught up with raising children and just paying the bass statements and I think that's absolutely typical. People do get caught up with their day-to-day -day life and what's happening next week and the week after and forget that they've got to be thinking some long-term goals as well. But I think, is it fair to say that people don't actually see the purchase of their home as a superannuation plan? Because it is. It is. It's one of the best tax-free assets you can have, provided you buy wisely and in a good area. Um, and I think that's probably at the back of their minds. They think, well, look, if, all, if it all goes to dust, I'll just sell the house. Mm. Yep. So it's a good cornerstone asset. Mm. Are people generally just thinking about the instant and what's immediately yeah. in front of them? Exactly what you said before and the, the interviews indicated. Look, I would see plenty of people who wake up one morning and say, Do I better do something? And you say, why didn't you do this like five, ten years ago, if yeah. only? Yeah. But it's just human nature. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Maybe people think that they're going to be OK on the old age pension. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe. they do. Yeah. I don't know if that? you could actually survive on that. Maybe maybe survive barely, but could you thrive? It, it depends on the, the time in, in the period that you were born. A lot of people can live on the smell of an oily rag if they were born in the you know, if they were children of the depression. They can make mm -hmm. ends meet. More affluent people like ourselves, born in the fifties and the sixties and the seventies, like these two young ladies, um, you know, there's no way in a million years they're yeah. going to live on the smell of an oily. So rain. we're going to need to have a little bit more in the kitty to retire no, we need comfortably. The oil well. Right. Absolutely. Sandra, thank you so much for popping in. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. Thanks. We'll see you next time. And we'll be back with more in just a moment on the exchange. Welcome back to The Exchange, where our guests, Dominic Alafachi from Collins House Private Wealth and Ostok Life's Vicky Massey, have been sharing their insights on how to make sure you can retire comfortably. Vicky, you mentioned earlier about getting some good financial advice, but for some of the people listening, uh, you know, where do you start with that? And is it out of the reach of most normal people who... Yep. You know, thinking about it. Yeah, I think that that's a really good point. I think it is out of the reach of a lot of people because you do need um, some money set aside to pay for financial advice. Because if you want good advice, you do have to pay for it. So you need about three to four thousand per annum if you're going to get ongoing financial advice as a as a ballpark figure. But Dominic was talking about that you can now go to Centrelink and they've got some assistance there. Yeah, look, for people who can't afford to get financial advice, and I've got to qualify this. Centrelink does not give financial advice, but they can give you a good indication of the framework of what your entitlements are and what 
the effect of moving an investment would be on your Centrelink age pension or disability pension, etc. Now these poor ladies and gentlemen are under big demand, they're called FISOs, Financial in Information Service Officers. So give them a go, it takes a few weeks to make an appointment to see yeah. them. So be patient, but they do provide really, really good assistance and it's free. And so what kind of money would you be talking about? If you were looking at going to a private uh, financial planner, what kind of money would you be talking about that you'd be asking them to look after for you? Well, it's really interesting. It's not the amount of money that it used to be a percentage of the amount of money. And for a firm like ourselves, let's say half a million would be the minimum. But really, you don't have to have the money. You just need to have the ability to pay for the advice. So th as Vicky said, three or $4,000 a year is about where it starts at. Um, and that gives you good quality independent advice with all the commissions refunded and all the benefits you know, paid back to the customer so that they can invest knowing that the advisor isn't conflicted. And so that advice actually should pay for itself yeah, well, over the years? Sometimes, sorry Vicky mm -hmm. to cut, off, cut you off there, but sometimes the best advice is to do nothing. Sure, right. absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Vicky, would you like to add in yeah. to that? Um, I, think, I think we were talking in the break that even if you saved you know, the, uh, the cost of a cup of coffee every day just made a start. It's about just trying to start from today going mm. forward. So go and from here something. and buy a thermos. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's what we're saying. That's it, absolutely. A cheap just, thermos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but no, it do... has to last a long time. Oh, that's true, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but just do that's something. Found advice. Yeah, so... A high quality cheap thermos, <laughs> I'm convinced. <laughs> so just... what you're saying is starting somewhere, right? Start somewhere. Yep. Start somewhere. And as Dominic said, it may be that you do nothing but just start just start being living within your means. Something simple like that. Which that would be novel, do. I would imagine, for many yes. people. Uh, last financial seminar I went to, the man that was speaking said that most people lived around a third beyond what they earned. And so, you know, people will say, if I earned more, I'd be better off. Uh, no. That's a myth because they then stretch their expenditure yep. accordingly and as well. And also, the Financial Planning Association have got some great um, uh, tools on their website. Money Smart is a terrific way to help young people make those difficult decisions, whether they buy the new fancy pair of Ferragamo shoes or they go and I'm buy the that you. I'm impressed that you know about those beautiful well, shoes. they're Italian, aren't they? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Ferragamo. No, I need you. If only. If only. If only. If only. Yeah. So what you're saying is doing something. Yes. And I think that's why somewhat, sometimes we do nothing mm. yes. because we, can't, we can only do a little thing. Can, can I just butt in there and ask a question? Talking about Uncle Ferragamo, <laughs> how much should we rely on inheritance for our future? Mm, good question. Mm. Mm. And we'll finish it's, on this. We've got to go. It's just something a that you don't want to rely on, but if it's inevitable, you should take it into consideration. So don't stress yourself out too much if there's no. something on en route. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I think now with aged care, which we were talking about before too, which is a very complex area, yeah, you should definitely not be re relying on that inheritance because people are having to pay for their own aged care. So that is often what you're very thinking true. is your inheritance, mm. is being yes. used for aged care. So I think you yeah, don't rely on They're it too spending much. spending it all. They are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're living too long. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, some great advice today. And uh, Vicky and Dominic, thank you so much for your thank time. You. Okay. Thanks thank for you. having us. Thank you. Please go to our website for the fact sheets and for more information about this show, The Exchange. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Mm.